Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Long Island Matchmaker Show. I'm Lauren DeFranco here with Maureen Tara Nelson, Long Island's only executive level certified matchmaker, 20 years in the business of finding love, finding soulmates, and helping people connect. Good morning, Maureen. Good morning. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Great to see you again, Lauren. I just Look forward to Sundays, seeing you every morning. As do I. I I think your hair looks really sexy right now. I have to be honest. I just (laughs) walked out of the shower. It's got that just, you know, I did nothing to it. Nothing. No hair products are in it at all. It's very natural looking, but really pretty. I like it like that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, let's start off talking about something really positive for you. And that's the award you recently oh, received, yes. that prestigious award uh, from the Long Island Press, I believe. Yes. Uh, Power Women in Business Awards. Very exciting. Tell us a little bit about that. It was fabulous. I'm so blessed. I just feel so fortunate that my family and my team all came with me. And it was just such positive energy being among such powerful business women on Long Island mm-hmm. and to be nominated as one of them I just can't even tell you how great it makes me feel and it just gives me more energy to go out there and help more people mm-hmm. and that's a pretty uh, big accolade to be one of Long Island's most powerful women in business oh, I can't believe it <laughs> that's I'm great very happy very it- Fortunate. Especially in a time when a lot of people couldn't pivot during the pandemic, you mm-hmm. chose to sort of reinvent the wheel and make your business even stronger and take a new approach to matchmaking. Yeah, I mean, you have to do things like that when um, you love what you do and there's a reason for what you do every single day and then something gets thrown at you like the pandemic was thrown at all of us, Mm -hmm. especially business owners. And what do you do? My accountant, if you remember, said, you have to close. You're not an essential worker. Right. I said, you're fired. (laughs) And by the next morning, that's when I decided to do virtual interviews and to teach our clients how to go on virtual dates. And we did daily Facebook lives. We did so many fun and exciting things just to spread love throughout the entire country. So it was just, you know, something that I did without thinking because I'm so blessed with loving what I do so much. Well, and it's also a really weird time because people were forced into isolation and now they're pretty much out of it, but it's still hard. It's like riding a bike, but you have to get on that bike with some trepidation, I guess, I suppose, right? Yes, but anyone that is single, use this opportunity now to push yourself because it's the easiest time to find love. And people probably don't even realize that But during the pandemic, people were calling up saying, I don't want to die alone. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine we were hearing that at least once a day from people? How sad is that? It it was Mm heart-wrenching. But the nice thing is we have so many success stories from exactly that moment. And if anyone watches our social media, you'll see on our Facebook, I think it was last week, one of our couples that met during the pandemic, they're getting engaged this weekend. So I so saw exciting. that. I saw yes, that on Instagram. Yes. So that's a success story oh, during so, the pandemic. Yes. Yep. Tell me a little bit about that couple, by the way. Uh, first of all, it's really kind of a cute story because love her. Okay, loved her from day one. Mm-hmm. Love this guy, Greg. He came in and he chose at that moment a six-month program. And I said to him, you know, I can never guarantee that people will be successful because I don't know if you'll take my advice. Mm -hmm. And six months is really not a fortune of time. No, not at all. So I like it when my clients pick a year program Mm -hmm. because it puts less pressure on them, certainly less pressure on me, and then I'm even more comfortable and confident that I can make them successful. Right. So he joined the six-month program, and I just knew I could make him successful. I loved everything about this guy. Even did a video of him that day, 
and put it on my social media. And by so, the way, if you want to see this couple we're talking about, it's on oh, Maureen's yeah. Instagram at MTN Matchmaking. Every, yes, and it's also on my Facebook. All of our social media is under MTN Matchmaking, so you could see the picture of them. And they personally. look very happy. They're so happy. They're the cutest ever. And he ended up going through his six months and saying, wow, I met such nice women, but you know, I'm not engaged yet. I'm not married yet. And I said, well, that's why I recommend everyone doing this for a year. So he, during the pandemic said, okay, I'm going to renew with you. So when he renewed, you saw the photo. He has a very full beard. Mm -hmm. I did see that. Yeah, Not everyone's taste. Yes. (laughs) And I actually said to him, in my opinion, I would get rid of that beard. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I look back and it's so funny because usually my advice is correct. Usually. Some women do like a beard. So (laughs) for many reasons. (laughs) So I could admit that just because I'm giving someone advice, it does not necessarily mean (laughs) they're gonna take it. That and that it will work, you Mm -hmm. know, because everyone is different, like you said. Did he get rid of the beard or no? No. So he, I matched him up with this beautiful girl, Sylvia, and he said, oh, Maureen, I didn't have a chance to get rid of the beard yet, and we're going to go out. You know he really and didn't want to get rid of the I beard. know, I know, of course not. And I said, okay, well, look, just ask her what she thinks about it. Tell her what I said, mm-hmm. and let her know that you are willing to get rid of it if you don't like it. Mm-hmm. She loves it, and they're engaged <laughs> now. So-, <laughs> so go figure. Everyone is different. Everyone's and that's true. Different. I do believe that you shouldn't have to compromise too much or something that, you know, a facial hair is not, you know, it could be a deal breaker for some people, not a deal breaker for me. But it shouldn't be. Right. Right. And a lot of times people make the mistake and they'll say, oh, Maureen, look at the way that man was dressed on his photos. (laughs) And I'll say, come on, that's something easy. It's an easy Uh, fix. There are some things that you can't fix. True. Some things you can. So put that in perspective. A beard is negotiable, I would assume. I would assume. All right. And I want to talk about this because I do believe that going into the holidays next week is Thanksgiving. And it's kind of depressing going into the holiday season, knowing that you're going to be alone. I mean, I have my two children, so that's fun. But it is a little sad. And then going through social media and seeing all the people out there who have, yeah, you know, stop partners. the people with the bragging already. Okay, oh, it's very please very if you're on social if you're on social media, take it easy with how perfect your life is Ugh. around the holidays. Just be aware that other people might not have it as good as you do. So it's okay to show everyone how Happy. blessed you are, how thankful you are. But be humble about it, for God's sake. Also be aware that there are people who are suffering during the holidays. And it's a depressing time for a lot of people because there's a lot of pressure on the holidays to have fun, to to be, have a partner. Yeah. And not everyone does. And a lot of people probably don't realize this till it happens to them. But most breakups occur right before the holiday season. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing this for 20 years. So now's the time that... With Thanksgiving coming, and then in a few weeks after that, we'll have Christmas coming. And a lot of times, my couples that I have on hold with one another will call me, and they'll actually say, I think I better break up with him because blah, 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 Mm -hmm. or vice versa. And again, they don't realize it's just that they're putting way too much pressure Pressure. on themselves because of the holidays. It's self-inflicted pressure. It is. And it's self-sabotage. It is. So just think of the holidays as just another day with a few extra bonuses. That's it. Right. Because by putting too much pressure, it's self-defeating. Well, I came up with this this morning. I was thinking, because you're such an expert in the field, let's talk about what some things are that singles can do to make themselves feel better during the holidays and to not go into the season saying, poor me, and going into the season trying to make yourself look better or go to a, an event here and there. Yes. What, what do so, you say? First of all, never be that person, poor me, <laughs> because 
if it you, doesn't work. <laughs> if you do that, then every single day thereafter, you will have a situation that comes up that it will be poor you. And no one wants to be around that person. No, no. So you will be isolated. No one's going to want to be around a Debbie Downer. It's like fix your stink face. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have that resting bitch face, please. No one likes it. So it, it's surprising to me that so many people still don't know what that is. And I'll have to say to one of my clients, look in the mirror. You, you see that looking back? <laughs> look well, at yourself. I say it with kindness and love. Mm -hmm. But I say, this is the face I'm seeing. Do you see a smile on that face? And literally, you'll see their eyes light up and they really see for the first time that they're not putting out positive energy. Mm -hmm. They're not smiling. They look mad. They look angry. No one wants to be around that. My so, aunt Stella used to say, this guy looks mad at the world. <laughs> <laughs> and who wants to be with that guy? Nobody. Whereas there are things that you can do and should do that you just every day write down something that you're blessed with, mm -hmm. something that you're thankful for every single day, and do it every day before you wake up. It, it's a and positive concentrate on affirmation. That. Yes. And I was also thinking, what about if you don't have someone to take you out to a nice dinner, maybe treat yourself to a nice dinner. Yes, and if you have friends, and if you have family members, then go with them. There's always people that you can go out with it's just you're not really looking hard enough if you can find someone mm -hmm. because there could be someone you work with that maybe would love to be friends with you, but maybe you've never been friendly enough to them. Mm -hmm. so or you start, just put your walls up. Yeah. And you no one should have a wall up. Get the walls down unless you want to be alone. Mm -hmm. But be if vulnerable. you want to be alone, then I can't help that person, nor do I have advice for that person. Because my mm -hmm. advice is all about putting out the positive energy, and that is what you will get back every single day. And what about your physical appearance? I think it's always important to take care of yourself. Yes, and to be if your you best feel or try to be your best. On the outside, you'll yes. feel good on the inside and vice versa. Vice versa. And it is so important because every one of us knows that we're not perfect. We are all a work in progress. We can all be better at certain things. Mm -hmm. And it's okay how you are now. I'm never the type of person that's going to say, you can't meet someone because of the way you look. That's impossible. If you're a nice, decent, quality person, you're emotionally stable, you're looking for a committed relationship, and you're a positive person, then you are a great candidate for someone. There is a lid for every pot. You just have to give yourself the opportunity to find the different pots, the different <laughs> pans, to see who you feel comfortable with. But there are people that you can meet, and usually it's our own insecurities why we're alone. Mm -hmm. So use the holiday season as a time to try different things and to force yourself to have fun appreciate life. Look what we've all gone through the pandemic. Right. Every single one of us has been affected. So that brings us all closer to a certain degree. It makes us all realize that no matter who you are, how hot you are, or how great shape you are, we all want to lose the pandemic 15. So right. everyone, everyone, this is the best and easiest time to find love because none of us are perfect. Even if Look, I could look back at when I started this 20 years ago, and I was at my prime 20 years ago. Okay, so that doesn't mean that now, 20 years later, that it's anything bad. No, but you just have to reinvent yourself mm -hmm. and find different things about yourself that you're going to be happy about and focus on and do it. And work on. And I think, too, the pandemic showed us that no matter who you are, what status you have in life, and how much money you have, what kind of car you drive, it put us all on a more even playing field because yes. right. we all had to go through the same thing. It didn't right. matter. We all had to be isolated in our homes for months. Yes. We all had to come out with trepidation. We all had to you know, get vaccinated. We all had to do the right. same thing, take the same steps to get back to a new normal. 
And nobody was better than anybody else during that time. And that's why I say it is the easiest time to find someone now. You just have to find a platform that you yourself feel comfortable with. If you're just looking for friends only, then the internet is probably the best way to go. Or an events meetup group is a good place to go because you're meeting people on a friendship level. If you want to raise the bar and you want to have a committed relationship, that's usually who calls up my mm-hmm. company because they want a matchmaking service where we do all the work for them. Mm-hmm. So it just depends upon what you want, but do something. Mm-hmm. Never spend the holidays alone. Never feel Poor me, as we discussed before. And I feel going to a matchmaker, such as Maureen, who's been in the business for 20 years, she really does take a lot of that angst out of the process because you vet people out, you take calls in the middle of the night, Mm -hmm. you know your clients, you know what they're looking for, and you don't have to go back and forth. And I always say it's a big waste of time on the Internet. Right. And you do the work for people. Let me waste my time. (laughs) This is my new slogan. (laughs) That's her job. Because with the holidays and after the pandemic, naturally more people than ever want to find love. But that means more people are not going to be qualified either just because we're not for everyone and we can't be. The Mm -hmm. Internet is for everyone and anyone. So you want to raise the bar, that's where I come in. However, the fact I don't take on everyone means that I'm going through this screening process. And I can tell you, I have disqualified more people recently since the pandemic than ever before. Mm -hmm. And when I do that, I just saved you, the potential client or a client, your time that you would have wasted on this person I wasted an hour of my time, but that's okay because that's what you're paying me for. And she saves you your worries, worried yes, exactly. thoughts right. yes. that you're saying, what did I do wrong? And why did, and this is <laughs> another thing that I wanted to talk about ghosting. Now, everybody, I, I think everyone has been ghosted at some Anyone point. Anyone on the internet has been ghosted. And nobody knows why they're ghosted, but right. everybody takes it so personally, and right. it could have nothing to do with you and usually doesn't because that person who right. ghosts you usually is probably miscommunication. Not, or is not a very nice person. If you ghost right. someone, it's probably you're not that great of a person. But do people ghost more during the holidays? And do you, you probably don't get a lot of ghosting being a matchmaker. It doesn't happen because... We find out if a person doesn't call someone back. Mm -hmm. We have dating coaching. That dating coaching person, your dating coach, can call the person up. And we know how to say things like, so how did it go? Without them knowing that we spoke. And we find out the real reason why. Now, it's kind of a funny story. I'm going to share it with you because I really don't think that this client listens. (laughs) listens. <laughs> well, well, although you never we'll, know. We'll find out soon <laughs> enough. But so we had a situation of one of our guys, he got ghosted. So we know the reason why. Now, I didn't like the reason I was told by the girl. Mm-hmm. So for me. So in your, in the ghosting in the matchmaker world is I don't want to talk to this person anymore. Yes. You tell them we're done. Yes, but it's unacceptable. It's There are better ways to do it. Right. So I didn't like the way she handled it. Mm-hmm. So I knew how to change around the situation to make her realize what she did was horrible because I came right out and I told him what she said, knowing this guy was going to tell her. Maureen said... You didn't like me because of X, Y, and Z. Now, here she was hearing it out loud from the guy who just took her out twice Mm -hmm. to a really nice restaurant. And she was mortified. But good. I wanted her to be mortified. Mm -hmm. Because, like I said, what she did, it's not something that happens at MTN Matchmaking it's not something that I put Wait, up so with. Wait, so why didn't she like the guy? 
I'd really rather not say. No, come on. But it just really wasn't nice. Was it something to do with his hygiene? No, no. He did nothing wrong. That's that's the issue that what got me so upset. Mm-hmm. Okay. She just was um, being a little bit too high on herself. Mm-hmm. And you don't do that in mm-hmm. my program. No mm-hmm. one does that. Mm-hmm. So I knew if I told him what she said, I knew he would go and say, wow, Maureen said you said this about me. Mm-hmm. So now with her hearing that, she realized she sounded so superficial and she sounded not like a nice person. Mm-hmm. And again, we don't tolerate that. So when that happened, all of a sudden then, she starts warming up to him mm-hmm. because she's embarrassed. Right. So then she starts seeing him in a different light, in a different light, realizes what she did was not right, and now they're going out again. Oh, really? Now, so this the, is a success story. <laughs> yes. But look at the steps that I personally had to go through, and I knew the answers of what would happen before they happened, mm-hmm. and I was sharing it with my team at one of our team meetings, and... My team was really kind of surprised that I knew ahead of time that this would happen. Mm -hmm. But obviously, when you do something for 20 years, it becomes second nature to you. Right. And you know pretty much what's going to work and what's not going to work. So the nice thing is she realized, okay, I really better be a nicer person. Mm -hmm. And now they're back together. Well, that's wonderful that it worked yeah, out for the yeah. best. And that's a, that's a good success story. Um, so we have a few questions that you never get to see. Do you believe in regrets in dating or are making mistakes a part of the process? I had this conversation with somebody a couple of days ago. What do you think? Well, I mean, look, we just spoke of that situation. <laughs> she made a huge mistake. And if I did not do that, say if she was on her own, she would have never seen that guy again. Mm-hmm. He would have been ghosted if he was on his own. Right. And she made a mistake. And now things are fine. So things like that do happen mm-hmm. on the and outside I, world. I say every person that you date or that you're with teaches you something. Yes. They bring something to the table. Yes. Always look for something that you've gone, gotten out of even a bad relationship. Absolutely. Even, even bad relationships. Even mm-hmm. relationship. If, God forbid, you've been in one. Look to find something good and just don't do anything that could possibly put you in that same predicament. I agree. And now, what do you think the number one reason people break up is? Well, it's either (laughs) compatibility or chemistry. Uh So I would venture to guess. I bet it's chemistry. But a lot of people make the mistake and they think it's chemistry. He didn't think I was pretty enough. She didn't think I was um, successful enough. It's usually not that, Mm -hmm. okay? Or I had a couple of extra pounds. He must not have liked that. Mm -hmm. It's usually not that. It's usually, wow, I thought we were really compatible in the beginning because everyone's putting their best foot forward. Right. And then as you're getting to know the person, which usually takes six months, you're finding out, oh, We're not as compatible as I thought. And you're usually not unless you're in a situation where everyone is basically the same. Like, for example, when you're in college. Mm -hmm. Yes, everyone is pretty much on the same playing field. When you're in college, it is the easiest time in the world to find people that you're compatible with and that you have chemistry with. That's very true because yes. you're doing the same thing You're at all the same there time. for the same reason. You don't have kids to take care of. Yep. You don't have a job to get to. You're at college because you want to get an education. You want to be smart. You want to get a great job. So therefore, half of the things maybe, or a little bit less than half, of the reasons what could make someone compatible or not are met. So typically, most people are compatible in college, and that's why it's so much easier. Then people graduate from college, Mm -hmm. and then the dynamics are changing because you go into the work field. You might go into, say, the guy goes into sales. The girl becomes, say, a teacher. Mm -hmm. Two totally different professions, totally different 
I'm not saying you can't be compatible with different professions, but there are certain adjustments that you both have to make in order to keep yourself in that wave of compatibility. Well, I will say this. As a news reporter, if I hadn't been with someone and I met someone while I was a news reporter, I think it would have been game over because I had to get up at 2 o'clock in the morning and I had to go away for three or four days at a time and I had to put aside everything for that job. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people would not have liked it or understood, you know, why do you get called in at 2 o'clock in the morning, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's a job that really people have to understand or be in the same business. Yes. And I'm sure... Or just for different reasons, say, for example, a physician would be compatible to that because he's getting called in all the time. And they understand being called. So, you know, again, that's the next step after college going into the workforce and trying to stay compatible, that's usually the millennials will find at that point or people equivalent to the millennials because I just, I love calling everyone. (laughs) You're all millennials after college. I don't care. I know it's wrong. I just think it's funny and I'm not going to change. So for everyone that emails me in, I was offended by that. Don't care. Don't care. You're a millennial. That's why you're offended. But I say that with love, and I say it just um, in a joking manner. But well, this is actually a good question for millennials. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> is dating five people at one time too much? And how many people at a time is too many? Jeez. Jeez. Okay. So, oh, this is tricky. This is if you're in your 20s. Date as many people as you can. Enjoy life. Dating, to by the, the way, fullest. doesn't mean physical. Oh, relationship. of course not. I, and again, I've said this many, many times to people. I've had a hundred boyfriends before I got married. I, ne- I didn't sleep with them. You know, I had boyfriends. Full disclosure. <laughs> I, yeah, I didn't. I, um, when I got divorced, I had thirty-six boyfriends. In my three years of the divorce, wow, didn't Look sleep at you. with them, but they, they were boyfriends. Uh-huh. It was great. It was fabulous. So, <laughs> if you have the opportunity that for whatever reason you're not ready at that moment, for example, when I was in college before getting married, I wasn't looking per se to get married. So it was a great opportunity to meet as many guys and to go out with as many guys as possible so you know what you like and what you don't like. Then the same thing after a divorce. You have to reinvent yourself. Mm -hmm. And you have to look for people that are compatible to you. So it is best if you're not ready to jump right into a committed relationship because most people are not. I, I have a whole, I could write a book on people that are, and why I would not recommend it, but that's another, (laughs) we'll do that another day. So if you are after newly divorced, it probably is best to meet as many people as possible, but again, don't sleep with them. Mm -hmm. Because once you do that, you change the entire dynamics of the entire relationship. And also beware that if you're on the internet, People are dating more than five people oh, at of once. of course, yes. Because they're not on the internet yes. trolling for nothing. Right. I wish I could use my typical Friday Facebook Live language here, but we're on KJOY. <laughs> I love KJOY, so I'm not going to get them mad at me. Nope. We're wait, following wait, all the guidelines. Stu? Stu's not here watching us today. Maybe I can say it. <laughs> the boss is out of the room. <laughs> How racy can we get? Okay. I hope they don't cut that out, peeps. <laughs> They're not going to cut that out. <laughs> all right. So let's think of one more question. Okay. What's the most, this is a funny one, what's the most shallow thing a client has ever said to you? Or what's the strangest thing oh. someone has said to you? I'm sure you get oh, a lot oh, of strange gosh. things. Oh, gosh. Okay. Maureen, would you like this? You have beautiful feet. Would you like to be a foot model for Revlon? Sure. I always loved my feet. I loved my toes. I became a foot model for Revlon. And then, you know, we did the 
Uh, look at how nice wow, they she's got a bright blue on yeah. her feet. Look at my beautiful feet. So did you use that to so, get all those dates after divorce? <laughs> <laughs> so I became the foot model on this one occasion for Revlon. And then the following week, I realized this guy, a client, had a foot fetish. <laughs> and I'm like, you, you're out. So after I had this super People deal with Revlon, he's done out of the program. <laughs> Kick him out for having a foot fetish. Okay, well, on that note. On that note, <laughs> I love you all. Thank you for listening. Thank, Thank you. you for listening to The Matchmaker Show. I'm Lauren DeFranco. And Maureen Tara Nelson, and thank you so much, Lauren, and thank you, KJoy, and thanks, everyone, for watching, listening. And have a great holiday. We'll be yes. back next week. Bye.